All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that we can be together tonight. Thank you that we can pray and talk to thee. Lord, help us now. Lord, we look to thee. And Lord, we depend on you. Lord, we thank of the folks that uh, may be watching, uh, Lord, in the distance. And uh, Lord, our own folks and other folks. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless. I pray that even though this this uh, stuff we're going to look at tonight is is very directly aimed at something. Yet, Lord, we pray that by your spirit, it would have application, Lord, to just all sorts of things and needs and conditions, Lord. And uh, Lord, that's the way your word is. It just it just somehow touches everything. And uh, Lord, help us now. And Lord, uh, we ask for the help of your spirit, Lord. And um, God bless your word. And Lord, destroy the devil's works, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. All right. You know, a little while back, we, we, we were talking about, uh, um, you know, how some some people, they they look at their little ones and they will um, <clears throat> they will um, uh, excuse certain things based on their uh, their um, personality, you know, and um, and somebody will say, oh, you know, I I don't want to I don't want to stifle their personality. Now, stay with me because I'm I'm, I'm going to launch off on something here in a minute. And um, so and tonight we're still running down that rail of some things that you want to instill in your young men. Uh, there again, there will be really some applications all over the place tonight. But, um, you know, I remember in, in a, at a house, this this guy and um, there one of their little girls was I mean, literally she was this high and she was the rascal of rascals. And, um, you know, it was comical. And it was, it was, it was cute, um, as cute as that can be, but it was bad at times. And, um, you know, she was very, very mouthy and very bratty. And, um, and one day they caught her and she was at, at the fence, um, witnessing to her Mormon neighbor and, um, telling her probably, you know, how her Mormon neighbor was all wrong, how she was going to go to hell, how she probably needed to be a Baptist. And she was just, you know, so this just little girl. And and um, I'm sure the neighbor, I'm not sure what the neighbor's reaction was. The neighbor either laughed or or was very angry. I don't know which way it went. But the comment that the parents made was, we don't want to squash her boldness. Can I tell you that is pure stupidity? Um, have we no common sense? You know, uh, you, you know, they should have what they need to do with a kid like that is rein that in big time and begin to teach them that there is a time to speak and there's a time to keep silence. And and, um, you know, because she certainly wasn't winning friends and influence and people. You know, some people say, oh, oh, Johnny's Johnny's just curious as he gets into everything in your house. And the fact is, he's not curious. He's he's nosy. OK. Um, and the Bible has words for that. Uh, there's a busybody, there's a tail bearer, there's a meddler, uh, somebody that meddles in other people's business. There's there's a lot of names for that. None of them are good. But somehow in our society, we can take something and we we rename something so it gets us as parents off the hook. And uh, but in, in in the process, we're damaging our children beyond description. Oh oh. Uh, uh, Susie's outspoken. Oh, that means, oh, that means she's mouthy. That means she's callous. That means she's stuck on herself. That means she's insensitive. That means she has no discernment. But, but the way we get around that is we say they're outspoken. In, in young men, there is a terrible trait that sometimes rises to the surface. And, um, and you'll see these little guys once in a while, uh, a little boy and, and um, he, he cries a lot. He doesn't like tough boy things. You know, generally, and, and very generally, but, but very most of the time, and, and they, this has been scientifically observed. If you take little boys and little girls, and, you know, when they're small, and they haven't been, you know, uh, immersed in, in the school system, and, you know, and you put cars and trucks and dolls by nature, by nature, 
95% of the time, the boys go to the trucks, the girls go to the dolls. Just it's just uh, it's just the way they're wired. Um, but occasionally there's there's a, a little boy that doesn't like tough boy things, and somebody says, "Oh, he's he's just sensitive. He's more artistic. He's soft-hearted." And when he hits the public school, man, oh man, they're going to capitalize on that. The Bible has a word for it. The Bible word is effeminate. The public school system says that's okay. And they would look at this young man and they would bring him in and they would, they would immediately begin to psychologically assign him his identity and it is not the identity that God gave him. And uh, it reminds me of a story that I, I met a preacher uh, several years ago. He's an amazing guy. He was an amazing athlete. And uh, when I met him, he was 35 or 40. And he was, he was preaching actually at Teen Lightning quite a number of years ago. Great big guy and tall guy. And uh, he, he, had, he had played a lot of football, not, not on a professional level. But, I mean, he was a man's man. And to that very day, he had athlete written all over him. And all the, all the young people loved him. He was just a great guy. But, you know, he hadn't always been like that. See, here, here's you, you, it, you accept the thinking of the world. Without even realizing it. Boy, the air we breathe is contaminated. And I don't mean, I don't mean with, with the smoke and noxious gases. I'm talking about with the spirit of this age. It's contaminated. And, and without even thinking, you you begin to think, oh, you know, well, Johnny's tough and and, and you know, Billy's just a softie. Well, that may be at the moment. But your problem is, without thinking, if you're not careful, you're going to assign them a destiny. And I'm just telling you, I'm going to tell you right up front. Parents, you have control over that. You have control. That's why your example, let alone your example is so important. But you are the molders of a destiny. And you say, well, well, he's this and she's this. Yeah, okay. And you can, you can fix it. You can fix that. You can fix it. He said that when he was a little boy, he said his dad was uh, in the military and his dad was in the military for many years. And so what that meant was his dad was gone a lot. And um, his parents put him in a Christian school and, um, and he was, his brother was, was, was a real tough guy, but he was not. And he was very soft and effeminate. Um, they spotted this, you know, he, he, one place they moved by now he was a young teenage boy and, and, uh, it was really, it was really beginning to manifest itself. It, it always had, but it was just getting worse. And can I tell you that that's all those things ever do. If you don't deal with their issues, they only get worse. They don't go away. Oh, it's just a phase. Oh no, no, no. You're going to mark them for life. Attack the phase and eliminate the phase and change the destiny. He said, uh, he said he, he didn't know it at the time, but he said the school principal came to his dad when his one, one day when his dad was home. And he said to the dad, he said, Mr. So-and-so, he said, your son is headed a terrible direction. He said, if you'll give us a free hand with him, if you'll let us work with him and you will not interfere, we will knock this effeminate stuff right out of him. But if you don't, he's going to be a full-blown flaming sodomite. He said, will you let us work on him? And the dad said, yes. The school principal and the sports coach put him in, in the, the school football program. Now, here's this soft, effeminate boy. They put him in, and, um, and, and the guy, was, as he was telling the story, he said, I didn't like it. He said, they literally worked me over. He said, they steamrolled me. They were rough with me. And he said, they would not put up with my crying. He said, and my mom and dad, to, to their credit, he said, my mom and dad turned a deaf ear to all the complaints. Praise the Lord. 
And he said, after a little while, he said, I began to toughen up. And then a little while later, I began to excel at football. And a little while later, I began to act like a man. And he said, and I became a real man against everything that had already manifested itself in my nature. Would you look with me at 1 Corinthians 6? Now, I realize when I when I wait in some of these topics, you know, I'm just on, uh, you know, I just never know how it's going to be received or how people. But can I can I encourage you to do something? You guys, most of you have been with us long enough that you you know that, you know, um, you know, you you may not agree with every single statement that I make. You, you may not. You, I may seem a little extreme, but if you could just set that aside and consider the truth of what we're trying to get across. It will help you. Okay, so look at 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor... Look at the word the Holy Ghost stuck in there nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And he looks at these Corinthians who were, Cor Corinth was noted for its sexual perversion. It was, it was the place in the ancient world to be the worst of perverts. That was what Corinth was known for. And he says, praise God, verse 11, and such were some of you. But ye are washed but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Uh, one of the things I want to I want to get you to, to see tonight is, um, um, you know, in your young men, uh, man, encourage, encourage, encourage every ounce of manhood and discourage, discourage, discourage every ounce of anything effeminate. Man, I remember as a kid growing up and um, uh, every once in a while I would I would uh, I, I would. I would hold my hand wrong and, you know, I would, I would accidentally do one of these. And, um, and my dad would say, son. And he, he said it really nice. Just like that. <laughs> son, don't hold your hand like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, I, I heard that whenever I heard that every once in a while. And then I would, every once in a while I would say something and I, I don't even know what I said, but you know, I must've said something like this. And my dad said, same really nice tone. Son, don't you talk like that. Say that again and say it like a man. Well, I'm telling you what, there's a phrase I heard over and over and over and over and over again growing up. Son, be a man. You know what? Someday I'm going to hug his neck. Can't wait. May not be far away. But you know what he did? He wasn't going to let an ounce of that into my system unchecked. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. When, when, now, now hear me, hear me out. When, when a, when a, when a young man, when, when that is there, that if, if you're not careful, they will ultimately be drawn in. And I've seen it now. Um, I'm going to tell you a few stories real quick. One was a boy that I was in grade school with. And, um, and he was a nice guy. Can I tell you, they're all nice guys. Like, they're too nice. That's, that's, that's how, where this goes. And um, I remember being in public school. I was in public school until 10th grade. And I remember being in first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade for the first, uh, for the first five years, I was in the same school. And a lot of us went to the same church and, um, it was a big church. 
and uh, there was one of the one of the guys there, and he was um, he was becoming a very effeminate in his mannerisms, in his actions. Now you got to remember, do you know what year this was? This would have been uh, 1969, 1970, 1971. This wasn't today when this is just it just you know a forbidden topic. Okay, so this goes way back, and um, and I remember one day my dad looked at me. And he said, son, he said, you know, and he said his name. I said, yeah. He said, I, he said, they're at church. He said, yeah. I don't know what had happened. I don't know if dad had had some dealings with his dad, but dad, my dad was very observant. And my dad looked at me and he said, he called his name. He said, son, he said, stay away from him. I didn't sound very Christian, does it? It was a whole lot more Christian than you realize there was another young man in the church, him, him and my sister, uh, no, him, him and his sister uh, were, we were, we were in the same age. We, we were uh, in the same class and, um, and he was a couple years older and he played the piano and he was a master at the piano. I remember by the time he would have been 14, you know, I would have been 12. I remember him playing for our youth group. Again, it was a big church. And uh, our youth group probably had seven or eighty kids in it, in, in just in our in our in that three or four grade, you know, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade group. And uh, he would play the piano, and he played like a master. And uh, um, but you know what? He he was effeminate, and it it was, you know, I don't know what the deal was, but I think I do know what the deal was. I think he was allowed to be that way. His parents probably thought that was okay, thought it was normal. And a few years later, I was with some friends of mine and we were we were out in public. And by now we were, you know, I was 17, 18 years old. And one of my buddies said, oh, he said, you know, that guy over there. And this 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 guy, this same guy was driving a uh, an ambulance. He was a paramedic. And he said, uh, you know what he's into? I said, no. And um, he was full blown into the land of Sodom. We went to church together all those years. You know, we, we get this idea in our head that, oh, it, it's only happened in the last 10 years and because it's our media is full of it. Well, our media is full of it and it's prolific now, whereas before it was not. So the media has everything to do with it. But I'm just telling you, back then, we all went to the same church together. We and it, They were decent churches. And, and you understand what happened? He was allowed to be something that the Bible condemns he he was allowed to be that way when i got to bible college um um my first year my first couple years i was in a singing group it was sort of a fluke thing and i wound up in the singing group that there was about um, 12 or 14 of us and we would travel on weekends and um there was like six guys and six girls and we, you know all the guys had a mic partner and you know and and um uh, my partner was this this girl. So, you know, we get to, we all get to know each other really well. We traveled together. We traveled for a few weeks in the summer, all that stuff. And um, my second year of Bible school, her brother showed up. And her brother was in my dorm room. So I got to know him really well. There were six of us in a room built for four. It was tight. And um, but we were all guys. And, and, you know, from the first day he walked in, you know, he was he was pretty effeminate. Um, and, um, and, and I'm going to tell you, he was not, he was not a sodomite, but he was very feminine. Again, we're in Bible college. Okay. So he, he made it through the year and, um, we were all his friends. None of us gave him a hard time. Um, and, um, you know, we accepted him. See, you know, and there again, you say, oh, you know, that's a problem. Everybody makes fun of him. I mean, you guys are. If that goes through your head, you have swallowed so much garbage. You're just, you're just, you're just way out there somewhere. Because you all got to understand, that's not what causes this. Well, if everybody would just accept it, that's not how this works. We were kind to him. We were good to him. He was our brother in Christ. We loved him. And um, the next year, he decided to change his major. And so he went to a secular university nearby. It was just a few months and the sodomites got him. 
And I mean, they got him. And he was never the same after that. People from school ran across him and he said, he said, don't even bother. He said, I know what you're going to say. I don't want to hear it. You know, they, the sodomites watch for those people. They watch, they watch. And then they zero in. Now that they don't, they don't always just watch for that. But when they see a young man, that's like that, they go, Oh, ho, 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 we got him. He's one of us. You need to, no, don't misunderstand what I'm going to say. You, young, young people, you need to stay away from the effeminate and from sodomites. You need to stay away. Um, because, now when I say that, you say, well, pastor, They've got to be saved. And you know what? Our guys, our guys witnessed to him down on White Ave. I've witnessed to him. You know, I'm not saying that you don't try to win him to Christ. I'm talking about as far as your friendship and your leisure time. I, I, oh, oh, you know, oh, well, you know, Sally's my, she's, she's my friend, you know, and, and I know she's this way, but she's my friend and she's so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how that works? Um, I've got person, I've got people in my family that, that got zoned in on. They got zoned in on, and this this sodomite started zoning in, and 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 it was you know whether it was male or female, and I'm trying to be careful. I'm trying to be discreet, okay? Um, I don't want to bear, embarrass any of my crew, but I have had them zone in because you know you're likable, you're nice, you treat them nice, but they're not. They got something else in mind, man. Um, there is a spirit to this. He, you, you need to burn, young people, you need to burn Proverbs 13, 20 in your brain. Parents, you need to burn Proverbs 13, 20 in your brain. It says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed you must burn them into your brain there's a spirit to this you need to stay away from their shows and their movies i don't know what you watch but there are so many of those things now that somewhere somewhere on the cast you know they've got they've got you know the girl from sodom or the guy from sodom you know and and they're hilarious and everybody likes them. And, and uh, you know what? If you see that, turn it off. Turn it off. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Although I think the reason's obvious. But look at some verses with me real quick. There's a spirit to this. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. There is a spirit. There is an evil, uh, literally, there are evil spirits that are at work. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna really move for the next few minutes. We're gonna look at several verses. So uh, Hosea four verse twelve. My people ask counsel at their stocks. Okay, stock is is a, it was an idol. Okay. It was a piece of wood that they had carved. My people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declareth unto them for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. That means to, to go into error. And they have gone a whoring from under their God. Look at Hosea five verse four. They will not frame their doings to turn into their God for the spirit, the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Now, right away, you, you think, well, you know, that just means, you know, it's just, they're using the word spirit uh, metaphorically. It's just, the, it's just the, the, the atmosphere. But, but the more you read your Bible and the more you begin to run the references on what happens here with, when, when the children of Israel drifted into idolatry, invariably, this stuff started quickly rising to the surface. Um, this whoredom that he's talking about 
is is not just spiritual. Was it spiritual? Of course. Uh, of course, they were being unfaithful to God like a man or a woman is unfaithful to their spouse, of course. But it was physical also. As Israel drifted spirit, spiritually, without exception, physical adultery followed. Now, I'm going to give you some examples. If you're taking notes, you can write some of these things down. And then I'll, we'll actually look at some. But if you're writing things down, write as Exodus 32. Moses goes up into the mount. And, you know, he's up there 40 days and he gets the law. But he's there 40 days. And boy, the children of Israel. Can you imagine 40 days? And, and the, 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 the presence of God is burning on the mountain. I, I don't understand. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't understand. And yet, and yet we're really no better. 40 days go by and they give up on Moses. So what do they do? They, they build a golden calf. So, all right. So here they go. This is, they've been, they've been worshiping the real God, but now they literally build this calf and immediately Exodus 32, read the passage. They fall down and worship it and they offer it offerings. And Moses comes down off the mountain and immediately the observation is, he heard the music and he saw the dancing and he says that they were naked to their shame among their enemies. They turned from this God. And man, it was at no time. And suddenly, just, it just, it just goes haywire. Look at, um, uh, no, you don't need to turn there. Write Numbers 25, 1 through 8. If you're writing notes down, write Numbers 25, 1 through 8. That's the story of Balaam. And uh, Balaam finally realizes that he cannot curse the people. So what he does, and you, you actually find this in another place in the Bible, God tells you what Balaam did. Balaam wanted that money. Balaam couldn't curse the people. God wouldn't let him. But Balak said, I'll give you a lot of money if you can. And so what, what Balaam did was Balaam went to Balak and he said, I can't curse them. But he said, but I can tell you how to get them cursed. He said, if you can get them involved in your idolatry, God himself will judge them. So he gets the money and he goes his way. The Bible talks about that in the book of Jude and in some other places. So here's what happens. Chapter 24 of Numbers closes out. Balaam looks like Balaam's not going to get any money. But something happens between chapter 24 and 25. Suddenly, the daughters of Moab, that's Balak's crowd, call the children of Israel to their gods in verse 2. And as you read down through the passage, suddenly the men of Israel are committing whoredom. And the Bible says it. The Bible says in verse one, the men of Israel began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And you have that famous incident where this, this guy goes and grabs this woman and takes him into her tent. That's what everybody's doing. But, but Phineas sees this one couple doing it and he puts a spear through them. And the Bible says at that moment, there was already a plague moving through the people. And in first Corinthians 10, it says that 23 thousand people died in that 24 hour period and what happened well they 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 embraced another god and immediately immediately physical adultery kicked off immediately um, look at jeremiah 5 jeremiah 5 there is a spirit to this Jeremiah 5, look at verse 7. Jeremiah 5, verse 7. How shall I pardon thee for this, the Lord says? Thy children, now watch, have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. So here's the reference to idolatry. So God establishes right off the get-go. He's, he's, he's upset because they have abandoned him and embraced another god. Look at the rest of the verse. When I fed them to the full... They then committed adultery. 
and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's houses. They were as fed horses in the morning. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. You see the, the, uh, the connection. Look at Amos. You're in Jeremiah. If you go to the right, you'll see Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Amos chapter 2. Amos chapter 2. Amos chapter 2 and um, verse 7. Do you realize this was the, the prophets? This was the sin that sent Israel into Babylonian captivity. It was idolatry, but idolatry was always linked. They always it always went together immediately. There was immorality involved. And that was because that much of their worship was the worship of Baal and Ashtaroth. Okay. Baal was the, the god of the crops and fertility. Ashtaroth was the goddess of beauty. And the Baal and Ashtaroth, the, the, the uh, worship practices that went with that, you, you, you know, it's just total, total, all out immorality. And that's why the pagans, that's why it was their gods. And that's, that was the drawing card for Israel. When they embraced those gods, man, they could do anything they wanted. Uh, look at Amos 2, verse 7. That pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor and turn aside the way of the meek. Now watch. And a man and his father will go in unto the same maid. Was she a prostitute? Was she a temple prostitute? What was going on here? The, the Bible doesn't say exactly what the situation was. But a man and his father. Now watch. Now watch. Will go into the same maid to profane my holy name, and they lay themselves down upon clothes laid to pledge by every altar. And they drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. This unbelievable immorality was going on in their temple by every altar. See, there's a spirit... It wasn't just, oh, come and bow to the piece of stone. Oh, no. There was more to it than that. There And there was a spirit. It's called the spirit of whoredoms. Okay? So, um, real quick, go to 1 Timothy 4, familiar verse, and then we're going to look at another verse real quick. 1 Timothy 4. Okay, ready? Here we go. Familiar verse, but boy, what a what a what a um, what an application, because it it is very clearly talks about the time we live in. Okay, First Timothy four verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That means urgently and very specifically. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Now notice. And doctrines of devils. There, it's there, it's two separate things. And he says, in the last time, some would depart from the faith, and what would pull them would be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They would be seducing spirits. And so right away, what we do, we think, well, you know, that just means it's seducing them into false doctrine. Well, if you follow the Bible thought from the Old Testament to the last book in the Bible, that seducing spirit is more than just false doctrine. And you see that in Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Now, you know, in this thing, of, and we're, we're still in the same thought, of um, effeminate young men, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, a, a young man can't paint pictures. It doesn't mean that a young man can't be a musician. It does, doesn't mean any of those things. 
It just means that we need to make sure and we need to encourage uh, things that we need to encourage tough man things and real man things and, and uh, you know, uh, working with your hands and exerting yourself and, and the stuff that men do. We need to make sure that along with those other activities, if, if you know, hey, some of the greatest painters that ever lived, Norman Rockwell. Now, Norman Rockwell was he, he, he was not known for being effeminate in any way. But I, I've heard I heard one artist comment on Norman Rockwell. He said he gave God more talent than he'd ever given any painter on earth. And you you look at Norman Rockwell's paintings and for years they were on the front cover of the Saturday Evening Post. And and he was gifted. Uh, some of the greatest musicians that have ever lived, Mozart, uh, Bach, uh, all these guys, um, were some of them evil, some of them were. But you know what? A lot of those guys were tremendous composers, and they were real men. They were real men. So I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, that artistic vein is a, is a bad thing. I'm just saying that, that effeminate thing, it's got to die because that's that will open the door to another spirit. Okay, it'll open the door. So um, look at uh, Revelation 2, verse 20. Revelation 2, verse 20. Now watch. It's interesting. Revelation 2, last book of the Bible. Revelation 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against these. Writing to a church. A church that God recognizes as a church. But man, they got a problem. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest, that means you allow this. That woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants with false doctrine. Is that what it says? That's not what it says. Her teaching, I'm sure her teaching was ludicrous. But they said, you're allowing her to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. So all of a sudden, you see the idol connection. Man, oh man, you know, it doesn't matter where the devil's head pops up. At any point in history, in one way or another, it's going to be similar. Verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit, do you get the picture? This is real live adultery here. Okay, this isn't some spiritual thing. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give, him, give unto every one of you according to your works. There's a spirit to this. That whole thing that draws people into that land of Sodom. And you know, uh, it, 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 it's amazing how it pops up even in Revelation 2, a church that God called a church. And here we are in 2024, and man, it's it's everywhere. And it's it's in our churches. And uh, again, I just want to sound the warning. Um, you know, this is not something that you tolerate. Now look, it's somebody else's kids, you know, be nice to them. Uh, we, I'm sure we've had him in here. We probably had dope, we've had everything under the sun in here. You know what? We love him. We're nice to him. But I'm talking about you and your kids. Your kids. Uh, it isn't cute. It isn't nice. Don't rename it and don't call it their personality. It's something that must be abolished. It's something that must be overcome, because if you don't, you open a door. And the devil is lurking. Do you, do you remember what happened to the children of Israel every time that they drifted into idolatry? Invariably, sodomy began to rise. And you see in some places where certain kings, good kings got on the throne, and it says they destroyed the, quote, unquote, the houses of the sodomites. Okay, so I'll give you a recent example. David Gibbs, he's the head of the CLA, the Christian Law Association. He's an old, old man now. And uh, he's traveled, represented churches everywhere, preached in churches all over the country, very well known. He said, I was at a big church and it was their graduation, um, sort of like their awards banquet. 
for their Christian school and they had a big Christian school. It was a big deal. And he said, we were given out awards. And so you can imagine, you know, you've got 800 people in the auditorium. This is your church. You've got your Christian school teachers on the platform and it's a really big, happy day. And, and everybody's, you know, got, got food, everything's going wonderful. And, and so they were going to give the staff member of the year award out. And so they called her name. And sister so-and-so, you know, this teacher got up and, uh, and she came and she got her award. And so they were, she's supposed to give a little speech. And you know what she got up to the platform and said? She got up to the microphone and announced to the whole world that she was coming out of the closet. Uh, I can see you doing that somewhere else. At a church gathering? 800 people there, your students there. You know what she's doing? She's making a point. Well, I'm telling you what, man, that spirit had her. We need to teach our young men. Yep, witness to them, try to lead them to the Lord, all that stuff. Be kind, be nice. And sincerely, be kind, be nice. Look, in our society, we have a flood of this. And they, they don't, a lot of them, they don't have dads. They don't have anybody to teach them. They've never heard the truth in their life. They've been pumped with this nonsense that they were this high. They don't have a clue. They don't know. And they, 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 and, and you know what? The devil's had a heyday with them. They need, they need, you know, some of us to come along, some of you to come along and, and show them the love of God and preach the truth to them and encourage them to come to Jesus Christ who will change them. Because the Spirit of God will drive out that other spirit. They can't both live there. But when you see it in your sons, even, even a hint of it, you know what? You still love them. You still have fun with your son. You still, all that stuff. But you know what? This is something that is deadly because there's a bunch of people outside our doors and they're watching for effeminate young men. We don't want them to zone in on any of ours. I want to close with a verse and we're done. Remember Jude chapter 1. Jude, just before the book of Revelation, Jude 1. Can I tell you, how, do, how does a person in our kind of a church... How, how does a person like my, my friend I went to Bible school with there that I told you about, how do they do that? How do they grow up in a Christian home, having heard the truth all their life, and then all of a sudden they make this leap to the other side of the fence? How do they do that? Now, granted, the, the, the deal is um, I know anybody can do anything. A Christian can do anything. But they can't, they can't live that lifestyle and be a believer. Okay, they can't, they can't walk into that lifestyle and just live the rest of their life. Say, oh, yeah, I used to go to that, one of them Bible-believing churches, you know, and I'm still a Christian, but I'm, I'm living way over here. It's like, no, 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 no. By the fruit, you shall know them. And um, if they can walk that line and just keep going that way and keep going that way, and God's not chastising them and they're just having the heyday of their life. You know what? I don't care where they went to church. I don't care how many times they prayed. They do not know the Lord. Um, the sons of uh, Eli the priest, they were laying with the women at the door of the temple. And the Holy Ghost said they were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. But how does someone that's heard the truth, how do they, how do, they do that? Well, some of them, some of them say, well, you know what? They, they swallow the many lies of the devil. And they'll say, well, you know what? I'm still a Christian. I still believe on Jesus. You know, and, and besides, God made me this way, and I just didn't realize it. And all these people, you know, they twisted all this scripture. Ha ha. They twisted all this scripture, and, and they just, uh, they just, you know, they just don't, they just don't understand people that are in love. And 
any dude that talks like that, male or female, that's come out of our camp, they're forgetting something. They're forgetting a whole lot, but they're forgetting something. Look at Jude chapter 1, verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, the angels, mind you, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And then the Lord makes a comparison. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You know, there's something, there's something about this whole thing. You know, sin is sin, and 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 you know, our sin put the Lord on the cross and and, the, you know, the playing field's even at the foot of the cross, and we understand all that. There's a sense in which all sin is sin, and, and that, that's, that's true. But there is a difference. You know, if I steal, if I steal a brownie, I'm going to lose my testimony. If I steal a car, I might wind up in jail. Um, but if I kill somebody, I, it's a whole different ball of wax. That's a whole different ball of wax. The Lord said, flee fornication. And listen to what the Lord said. Every sin that a man committeth is without the body. It means it's outside the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. So he puts it in a little different category. Not, not, that, not that one sends you more to hell than the other, but as far as the effect, the, 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 the effect and the, what it does in the spirit world and what it does with its long-range ramifications. You know, there's not very many cities God burned off the map. There's been a few. But God said, don't forget what I did to Sodom and Gomorrah. We know what they're known for. And God said, don't forget what I did to them. God said, that's what I think about that. God said, I'm just letting you know. He said, the people that run that rail and will not turn to me. Every sinner's got to turn to God. But the people that run that rail and will not turn to me. He said, the vengeance of eternal fire is waiting. Don't, don't, ever, don't ever buy into that line. Well, you know, God just wants them to be happy. And, you know, and, and you know, it's just, you know, they're probably just saved. And... No. No. That's not what the Bible says. So I want to encourage you tonight with your young men. And I guess you could flip it the other way. If you have a woman that's leaning in that that wrong direction and that it becomes visible either way, either way, God says, when you see if you see that one of your children. You better pray, 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 which you should be doing anyway. And you need to step in, say, OK, we're going to restructure our home. We're going to restructure our world. We're going to do something. We're going to make this little little guy. We're going to make him a man. We're going to make this little girl. We're going to make her a little lady and you'll do it for Jesus sake and God will bless you for it. Father, thank you for this truth. Lord, I pray it will be a help. And uh, Lord, I pray it be help. We got a bunch of young people in here and they're soon going to be marrying and raising kids. And uh, Lord, help them to think. Lord, Bible thoughts. And Lord, help them. To do the right thing, Lord, for thee. Give them great wisdom. Protect them. Lord, protect our church. But Lord, and Lord, you know my heart tonight, Lord. I, I love these people. I want to, Lord, I'm not, I don't hate these people. I want to see them saved, Lord. I, 
Lord, we, we, we witness to him. Lord, you know our heart. But Lord, but we, we want to please you and we want our kids to live for thee and to be what you intended them to be without all the damage, Lord. Please, we pray, help us in Jesus' name. If God has spoken to you tonight, why don't you take a minute with your heads bowed and just talk to the Lord. Lord, bear witness to the truth. Oh, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.